um, contents and it produces a, a dialogue or a conversation or um, information that it's, let's say, public. public. If I publish a tweet, uh, anyone um, in the world with internet can see this tweet the second after. But Facebook, because of this algorithm, but also because how, it, how Facebook is designed, um, it's not that public. So it's really good for interacting with your community, even more than Twitter, maybe. But it's not good, for example, for re reaching journalists, for reaching politicians, um, and for spreading, for spreading the word and viralizing content. Um, for for reaching a wider community than than yours, it's better it's better Twitter for um, talking to journalists, for for putting a message to to the to the press media, no? For launching a, a message from from the grassroots to the press media to politicians, etc. Um, there are these well these key differences. No sé si quieres añadir algo. The, the different, uh, also they tend to favor one content or another, they don't like links because you go outside, uh, they don't like YouTube because they are trying to, 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 to share their online stuff, video, audiovisuals, so there's like a whole like knowledge on how to make posts and what to post, but I think we, we won't go into that now. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like I had that like just I had the um, the data around here uh, from February two thousand and seven which was um like it's yeah. Yeah. Facebook doesn't want people to click a link that takes you outside Facebook. Yeah. Uh, any content which keeps the audience inside Facebook, and um, Facebook will will foster that um, with the algorithm. So will, Facebook will show it to more people. Yeah. Like for example, a YouTube link uh, is 0 0.5. Uh, an article, an external article, is just two percent. Uh, inline text 2.5, inline video post goes up to 11.5 and then if you do a live stream post 21 so uh, think about doing a lot of live streaming now for example because that is what Facebook wants to uh, people to do now no so uh, Facebook does have a very diabolic logic <laughs> and we have to uh, study it we have to know what we're doing with the tool how to use it and uh, how to, to 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 trick it as well no so how how do how do we trick uh, how do we manage to uh, to trick them. No, verdad? I'm going to put it in big. Yeah? No, I think it's like contrast or something, no? But no, the, the, no worries. Um, okay, so what is really, really important, like you don't post content out t into the blue through Twitter or through Facebook, of course. You have to have a built strategy and you have to have a community of people that are going to be synchronized and coordinated with you when you launch something. Like what Adria was saying, the first uh, minutes of a Facebook post are key for it to become really, really viral. So, um, do you know about the theory 1990? Okay, this is something used a lot in internet. Um, uh, more or less, it comes to say that 1% of the people do the work, 9% of the people are active and participate in some degree and uh, will help you out, and you're trying to reach the rest, which is the 90% which don't work, just watch no? and, and consume.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's a whole work of documentation that is going on in the whole event. So you will have like the sessions that have been streamed. Um, we, you, we, we will send you like, a, yes, like a resume, the materials. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how do we, what is important for us, like usually we know who the ones that are working with us, who the 1% are, but what is important is to find that 9%, okay? The complicity of that 9% that really wants to participate because participation has an element of identification and feeling part of something, but they really don't have the time maybe to dedicate as much as, as activists do. So uh, the idea is to try and find this, uh, build this 9% uh, uh, circle around, you know? And uh, this is, takes work, you have to like care for it, maintain it, listen to, like it's part of your group, it's just the wider circle of your group, so. Um, there's a, the, it is, it, this is like a very key element in order for us to, to be able to break through with communication, no? Uh, and also, uh, how to break with endogamy. Uh, lots of activist collectives end up just speaking to themselves or speaking to the people that are really, really close to them, no? How can we build in that 9% circle? People that have, have, we have people inside that circle which are very different to us. Different ages, different interests, but that share maybe um, the, the objectives of the struggle that you are trying to push through. So, um, how do we, uh, on a practical level, uh, how can we be in touch with these people? Because maybe they don't come to our assemblies or our meetings and so on because they don't have time. So, we have to find a way to make it easy for them, no? So, uh, I imagine most of you, yo creo que si me puedes enseñar tu un telegram o algo, luego cuando lo diga. Uh, like most of you, I imagine, uh, know you have WhatsApp and you have WhatsApp groups, right? Uh, how many of you know about Telegram, for example? A few, okay. We prefer Telegram because it's much better. WhatsApp has been bought by Facebook, right? And the application on the PC is really bad. Telegram has uh, a PC uh, you can download, which is this. And uh, it is really, really good in order to uh, share information with your community. For example, I am in a collective that is working on corruption. And uh, when I'm launching some news one day, I have a group, okay, which is, um, which is uh, where all my 9% is in this group, no? So I share with them the... the, the, the um, the post, or I share with them important tweets, or I ask them to uh, participate in any other way, no? So this way I have like maybe a group of 100 people that when I throw out a post will be tak tak tak, and they know what to do as well, no? They will be going inside, making comments, sharing, and helping to break the algorithm of Facebook. Because Facebook, as soon as it detects that there's interest, it will like put up the barrier. So this is key in, tr in order to try and, and break through it, no? We use Telegram for many other things. I don't know if we want to show them an example of how yesterday's event was covered, for example. There was a group with photographs, for example, no? Yesterday, did you see there was a lot of people with computers in one corner of the... Okay, so they were all, we were all coordinating with this, with Telegram, okay? So we had a group which was um, photographs, no? So the photographers were out there taking photos and sending them through to the people on the computers. There was another group with the people on the computers, some people that were just listening, listening to what the speakers were saying and capturing the, the, the important, the, the nice phrases, no? So the people that were on Twitter, on Facebook, were like concentrating and shaping that into uh, something to launch out, taking the photograph, and even sometimes designers that were actually preparing banners with, with like, because nowadays communication is very visual as well, no? And a tweet without an image doesn't work uh, as well as, um, 
as this, for example, no? And you're so like economizing uh, a lot of space, no? When you want to... So there was a whole team of people covering an event, coordinating through Telegram, And also, there was the, the channel of Barcelona and Comú, because Telegram also has a like, one-way channel, which now has 1,355 people. So this would be the 9%, for example, no? in some way. And Barcelona and Comú selects the most important thing they, they want to share with their community and sends it out there. The people see it, and if they want to interact, they do. It is a 9%, which is like maybe not so much interactive, but it is like the closer followers of Barcelona and Comú. So this is really, really interesting. I recommend you to look it out and it's, um, you can also like, uh, it has lots of features. We won't go into it now, but uh, it is key to organize your, your community, no? Volvemos a la presentación. Creo que está en Firefox. Ahí, vale. So, also collaborative pads, like uh, working on Google Docs, depends the, what you're doing, it's not the, be mo it's not the best option. Uh, we know what... Can I ask a question about Telegram? Uh-huh. No. Telegram is like WhatsApp, and you can copy a link from Facebook and put it into Telegram. So people receive that, click that, go into their own Facebook and do what they have to do there. You can also co co coordinate through Facebook groups, but it, for me it is not my recommendation. But I know transitioning to another tool, if you don't know about it, might be difficult. So maybe, yeah, maybe use a Facebook group and keep in a Facebook group. Hmm. Way of camouflaging oneself in terms of activism. Yeah. In, in, in sharing information because yeah. this, this, this networking of how the information is powerful, but if most of the time the source is, is not protected, <coughs> how to create a way that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like this is a whole different theme, like security. It is very important to work in a secure environment and that we take care of each other and not put others in danger. Um, I really recommend, if you want to look into this, there's something called Security in a Box, okay, from Frontline Defenders. And they, it's really good. You can read up at about many things, encryption, and we will send you all these, we will send you like a pack of links and resources you can look through. Um, but for example, that's why I choose Telegram, because even though it is not 100% um, free of being able to be hacked, uh, it is not Facebook, it is not uh, WhatsApp, it is not uh, a tool where we know they're, 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 we, we, we are more exposed, so to say, no? I don't know. I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Yeah. 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 But you have alternatives, for example, Jitsi, which is much better than like we yeah we the, like there are many no we will like in France there's a whole pack of things called some from a soft no. Like, there's really a lot of alternative tools if we just go further than just the commercial ones. So I really recommend you look into it. Yeah, Jitsi with J, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are more, eh? It's not the only one. Uh-huh. Uh, Telegram uh, 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 u
Yeah. And the Telegram uh, has seven in Russia. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, but uh, it's a whole debate about that, no? But uh, on a practical level and on an ethical level, for me, I prefer Telegram. It's a decision. It is your decision. But yeah, there's a lot of info on that. So what is our objective? No, Traditionally, uh, collectives, movements, organizations, uh, trade unions, pa political parties, have like a center thinking node which communicates out uh, most of the time in a unidirectional way to their community. And you have different ones, no? So imagine this is a movement, the housing movement, the climate movement, and whatever other movement, no? They are really not connected between each other, and if one of these disappears, all these people are left without a reference, no, without a community, and they aren't even interconnected between themselves much, no. So, um, what? Then there's the option as well, like decentralized, where you have like this replicated, but with many uh, different uh, centralized nodes, no. And what we, uh, the objective for us is to build a, a distributed network of movements, no? For example, the 15M. The 15M, which is, was called in, in Indignados by the, the media, we call ourselves 15M, um, was spoken about as a movement, 15M movement, but it was really not one sole movement. There were hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of small collectives inside this movement that had a, you say lot is too, no? See, which had the same identity, but through social networks were communicating, interacting, or even like mobilizing together in a distributed way. Uh, so uh, I think I will let you talk about identity. About what, sorry? Collaborative pads. Ah, collaborative pads, yeah. Um, um, most of you, when you do stuff online, what do you use? Uh, Drive, Google Docs, mm -hmm. these kind of tools, right? Yeah, okay. Um, we prefer to use uh, alternative uh, tools, which are called collaborative text pads. I don't know if you've seen Etherpad. Or you know Titan Pad, like there are many, many different ones, uh, and the thing is that they don't belong to Google, so you can have more control about who is accessing your information, and this allows a big, a big community of people to work online, building, I don't know, an article or building a communications campaign. Like for example, maybe we can show a pad with. Um, yeah, and show one that might have like a strategy built for. Ah, <coughs> mira, tengo yo uno acá. Por ejemplo, este. Vale. Eh, for example, eh, we are lo we are launching a campaign against a very very corrupt construction that has been done in Spain. Um, and uh, we, were, we are asking people, we are having a big event in a week's time, and we are asking people to participate and help us spread the word. So I open a pad, which is a public pad. Pad, pad everyone that has a link can access it and see it. Um, and I give it a name, and I share that link through uh, SMS, through WhatsApp, through email, through all my channels, <coughs> private channels, to my community, to my 9%, okay? So what do I see? What do I say? I say this is a public part that is inviting you to participate with us in this action, no? Uh, what is this project we are attacking? And I explain that, what's happening, no? Bajamos. What do we want to do? Uh, these, uh, this, if you want to come, this is where you can inscribe yourself. Um, how can you participate, no? Da, 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 and, I, and we give all the instructions. What day are we going to do this? Baja un poco. No, va, eh, perdona, sí, hacia, sube, sí. 
what day are we going to do this? No, on the day seven at 11 o'clock, because that's what he was saying. It is very important all together talk about the bottle, not during the day, but all together, for example. No, with what hashtag? No, everyone has to know where and what to talk, what's the reference, and then what we do here for the people that don't have time because they have kids or whatever, we already create example tweets. So they can just, for example, uh, if they don't have time, like prepare them and just let them go. That way they're helping. Though it's always better that people do their own personalized message because they will be the prescribers of, of, of what you're communicating. So this is just a small example of how we use pads, no? And we're not like this is a, it's connect, this case is connected to power, to corruption, to uh, many, we don't want this to go on Google Docs because of this, no? Different communities need different languages, I imagine, and not all the content is, is good for different communities. When I talk about breaking endogamy, for example, uh, um, for example, this campaign we are launching, no? we try to think who, which is different to us, would be interested in supporting this campaign, and we contact them directly. Maybe they're we usually not connected, but for example, as the, uh, as the guy that has done this thing uh, is the president of Real Madrid, uh, we are actually contacting people which are in the football world, in the sports world, which we would never actually be in contact with, but lots of them are angry because he's also doing things, or bad things with uh, Real Madrid, so many of them are wanting to participate with us when they usually, we ignore each other. So this is like, how can you also where, what are you doing and what and where you can find co uh, people that might uh, help you out, no? Yeah, then that's a whole different part of how do you build your narrative and what language do you have and what uh, visuals are you using, what aesthetics do you have in order to, uh, to call upon a community or not. No? So we, we will talk about that. No? But there's a very, very interesting example. In Egypt, no, they use as prescribers the taxi drivers. And they use them without them knowing, no? Because they said, we can't go to the taxi driver and say, tell your clients there is a march at such and such a day and such and such a time. They would get on the taxi and they would say, yeah, 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 I've heard about it. Yeah, yes, tomorrow it's going to be big. Yes, at seven. Yeah, in, uh, okay, yeah. So the taxi driver would be listening and, oh, wow, this is interesting. And they would be like talking between each other and asking other clients, do you know what's going on? And it became really, really good tool. Like, w what other places could we think about? No, like bread shops or there are many spaces. It's just creativity, no, that you have to say, how can we hack different? environments in order to do different things, no? So I'm going to pass through for Adria because he's going to talk about identity, yes. which is very, very important as well, and it has to do a lot with, with this you were saying, no? How can we find new people? Well, very related with what Emma was explaining about the one ninth and ninety percent. I think it's really important that, um, let's say this, there has been a big change in, in communication and political communication Le these last, well, these last <laughs> years, but also during the 20th century, no? Um, what we had let's say at the beginning of the 20th century, since the, since the 70s and so on. It's a, a kind of communication from, from one to many. 
um, for example, with the big spread of, of mass media, and also um, in sociological terms, for example, the workers' movement. We, um, we are talking about a movement of which is um, um, we compact and we we. Let's say it has a, an identity which is really un, um, universal in the sense of um, many, many people can feel, many um, thousands of people can feel identified with a concrete identity. Um, with the end of the 20th century, the beginning of the 21, there's a, let's say, a, a scattering of identities, and we can see that with also with the with the failure of, of representative democracies, etc. Um, many different. There are many identities where um, where there were only few identities in the political scenarios of of. Well, I think in all the countries in the world in the 20th century we had. Um, <coughs> The big identities um, of the 19, the, <laughs> the bourgeoisie, proletariat, etc., and the workers' movement. Now we have many kinds of identification, and also the communication has changed a lot in the sense that it was from one to many. The big mass media were sending a message, a universal message to many people. Not, now we have a kind of communication from, from many to the many somehow. No? We still have the big mass media, but the still the big mass media doesn't work as they used to work because they, they choose concrete messages also for their, their different audiences, etc. What I am saying all that, because it's really important to swift um, and to stop thinking in the sense of I will send a universal messages, a message, and and the um, people who has been evicted, um, the workers, um, LGTB, LGTB communities, etc. Everyone will feel identified, no? And the 99% will feel identified with this message. This is good, but it's also really good to think in terms of which different messages do I send to my different communities and audiences and the people who I want to engage with my project. Um, ¿Puedes poner esto? Aquí. Um, when, when we, when we had the, the electoral campaign of Barcelona and Como. I want to give this example. We didn't design uh, a unique message. Okay, we have concrete big messages for, for, like for everyone, etc. But also we designed like concrete messages for reaching concrete communities. Um, young people, um, abstentionists, people related with the old left, people related with the, with the new left people who used to work to the right wing, but now they, are, they possibly can, can vote Barcelona and Comú. Um, so like segmented, segmented, well, targeted messages to concrete communities, because otherwise people don't feel identified with a kind of universal message like for everyone. But if, they, if I'm, for example, a student and someone talks to me, um, um, in terms uh, like, um, um, well, as a student, then I will, I will feel more identified. This is the, the network of a uh, electoral campaign in Barcelona um, two years ago with the um, municipal elections. We have this, this big note is Barcelona Comú, Ada Colau, and this is the, the head of the right wing opposition, Xavier Trias. And these are all the other nodes of the political parties, etc. So what is good, I don't have the image here, I, I didn't find it, but um, there was a, a really interesting study, um, study um, from an academic here in Barcelona, um, and he, um, he showed how Barcelona and Como we had a really important front end. I don't know if you have this terminology of hackers. There's the front end, which is like what what it's um, what you first see in the website, and the back end, which is at the like at, at the deep at the 
at the end of the website. No? So we had a really strong front end with the two main um, Twitter accounts and, and profiles accounts, which are at Barcelona Comú and Ada Colau. But we also had a really strong back end, which was a huge community that all the other parties didn't have, and we had it in the neighborhood, uh, with also with social movements, etc. And this um, this huge community with was the the ninety percent when that Emma was talking about um, back at us, supported, supported, and 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 well, l let's say we we were able to win the municipal elections because of this back end who was um, pushing from 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 the bottom, no. Well, the other parties, they were conventional parties. They only had the, the front end. They only had the, their main Twitter, Facebook account, but they don't have a, a strong community um, behind. Um, yeah. Well, the, the, the back end and front end, you mean? OK. Yeah, technically. Yeah, it means, um, for example, you are a movement for the right of housing, let's say, no? And you have your profile, your main profile in Twitter and Facebook. Um, maybe um, you have many shares and many followers, etc., but you don't have a community around you that is, um, that is also um, promoting the same message as you, that is um, struggling with you, that is backing you in the network with many profiles. Here we have the profile of the account of Barcelona Comú, but all these accounts are related with Barcelona Comú and Ada Colau. While, for example, the other parties, they only have few other accounts backing them. So this is like the front end, the main accounts, but the, all the ecosystem, puedes volver al, al, a la presentación. All the ecosystem of other accounts who are on the same struggle as you, this is the, the back end, let's say. Yes, yes, they are, they are the community, they are more than followers. And they are um, sending their own messages, they are um, um, struggling, there are, um, nodes of communication also. They, they are not just um, retweeting and sharing. No? Um, now it's really common that um, in the big elections in the United States, also in, in well, in, in Turkey, etc. For example, Erdogan, um, um, Trump, etc. They are buying votes, votes, no? Um, thousands, millions of votes of, of um, robots that are um, sending, that are retweeting and, and you, their tweets, for example, no? And they, are, they follow them and they retweet their, their tweets, etc. Okay, this, this can be good to, to show that you have a, a, a tweet with 1,000 1, retweets, etc. But you don't have a community which is engaged with the same struggle that is sending also messages, etc. And you don't you don't have this kind of ecosystem. You have this more this kind of ecosystem, no? Um, <clears throat> so I'm saying that, going back to to the beginning, um, to the idea of not giving, not thinking in terms of universal message, but thinking in terms uh, of um, who we are. Um, which is your which is our community and our different audiences because we don't have a unique audience we have many concrete audiences and it's important to identify the many audiences and communities that are around us for example if we are a housing movement okay we have people worried with the housing issue but which kind of people which kind of communities etc it's important to identify that and, and try to, to, as I said, to produce a universal message for everyone, but also to, to, to produce concrete messages for, for the several audiences. Also to think about our frame, our goal, and our enemy, no? Um, who, are, who are we battling in the networks? Who are we um, talking ag 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 
let's say, which is our adversary or our, our, our enemy in the political scenario. Um, going back, well, see. No sé si tú quieres añadir algo. Sí. Um, just, just that. I think it's a really simple idea, but it's important because many times we, we, we conceive communication in universal terms and it's important to, to understand which is our community and how, how to wider it and how to make it um, bigger and how to reach the concrete segments of the, the concrete segments of the of the population, the society, and, and the people around us. Um, I know that it's a really shit <laughs> giving money to Facebook, but I really recommend to explore the possibility of using Facebook ads, because it allows um, micro-targeting, which means um, if you put only a few money, you can reach exactly the kind of people you want to reach with the message, with exactly, with the concrete message you want to tell them, no? You even can put a postal code. So, I mean, you can, for example, send a message to a concrete neighborhood of your city, um, to people interested in housing, people who are living there, who have housing problems, etc. So, I know that it's really bad to give money to Facebook, but I will tell you to consider using that because it it allows you um, to really produce this kind of not universal message, but talking exactly to the people, reaching exactly the people you want to reach. I have a question about that. Then. This on Facebook, mm -hmm. but, uh, it seems that uh, if you get used to it, you know, if you pay too much in the like market, you get this way yeah. Yeah. not yeah, so powerful. Yeah, yeah. So can you share a little bit about what you see going? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is important because as we told you before, people, I, Facebook uh, only wants to, to show people um, what they like. So if you put, if you promote a lot your Facebook posts with, posts with, with advertisement, people, I, Facebook will identify that your post is not interesting, no? So that you are, you are putting advertisement because people, people are not interested and you want to reach them. So it's important to, to be aware with that. What we do is only put it in really specific moments. If, in, when we want to, for example, when we promoted the, um, when we firstly promoted the Fairless Cities event in Barcelona and Comú, we put um, a Facebook advertisement and we segmented like in concrete countries, no? Um, well, Poland, Italy, United States, South Africa, many countries, and we <laughs> we are we, I am like <laughs> like destapandola, um, and and we also am um, um, segmented with uh, with a concrete age. I don't remember like from 18 to 50 with concrete interests like um, anti-capitalism, um, feminism, etc. I don't know if you, uh, any of you had um, received this Facebook ad, but um, we only do it in really specific moments when we want to put a, a really concrete and important message. So, like daily basis, you know, if you're talking about a week of your organization and so on, and this is not campaigning because campaigning is mm. right? Mm -hmm. But right now, do you use it often? Do you use it every day? Or no. Something? No, no, we use it like um, once in a month. Be for very important issues. Um, let's say if you have, a, if you are in a social movement and you are doing a crowdfunding, or there's an important demonstration, or you can say if you are in a municipal candidature and you are in a, in a campaigning, or, or you want to really foster an event like the Fairless Cities one the first time, like really concrete moments. Well, there, <laughs> there are many th theories about that, but um, as I as I show you, um, Facebook really considers the 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 duration, so the time from when you, you when you post that peop and the time that goes 
from when you post to the people start interacting. So it's important not to not to put the ad, let's say, for many days because um, Facebook will identify that many time has passed since you published. No, so even th even though you you paid. Facebook will show it less. But also, one day it's really short time, and the problem is that Facebook di um, distributes the, the advertisement badly. Maybe if you just put one day, it will show it a lot the first hour, then not. So it, well, we usually put it like two, three, four days maximum. But it also depends on the kind of campaign. If it's like all, something, that really goes from today to tomorrow, you have to. Well, if you want to talk about this issue, we can go deeper after the session. Um, I think she wants to ah. It's just one point of, about um, advertisement or ex ex um, ex ex sharing the, the information. Just how wouldn't that kind of jeopardize I don't think it will jeopardize more than more than have more, more than a Facebook page. I mean, the it only jeopardizes in the sense that, and when you receive an advertisement, you can you can see um, who posted it and and the segmentation, the age, the interest, etc. So you can you you. Let's say you 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 explain your strategy to to everyone, your communication strategy, but you don't jeopardize you as an activist more than more than just having a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like we are really running late, and we wanted like to try and make groups and and go deeper into the interests of the different. Uh, uh, profiles that are here today, so I'm going to really run through this, um, though it is very important, no? Uh, how we build the narratives and how are we talking to the people, how are we engaging in conversations with the people as well, no? Uh, like traditional left have a very specific way of uh, speaking and writing and producing manifestos and uh, like even organizations know that do investigation no they like p public like also like a lot of of, of material and da, 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 da. but people nowadays don't read so much uh, it is uh, turning more and more visual so uh, there are two issues here what is the language we are usually using uh, what are the visuals we are leaning on to also communicate the ideas we want to communicate and also what are the emotions we are using for example to communicate which is very important as well no uh, we have seen examples of uh, elections being won uh, with fear and hate lately no uh, and uh, and you listened to ada colau's speech yesterday she was talking about love no? How powerful are the emotions uh, we are using in how we, and, uh, when, we, when we engage no, in conversation? Like, are we just speaking to the mind? Or are we also like, speaking to the guts and speaking to the heart? No, I think it is very, very important because also this helps with the element of empowerment that helps people go into action and feel they they can be part of something and it it, it is a very very um interesting element to analyze as well like what in what situation is your society no um is your society in situation of shock doctrine no do uh, you really have to work on elements to try and bring them out of there in order f for them to go into action. For example, in the French Nuit de Boot movement, initially the slogan was on va leur faire peur. We are going to frighten them. But how can a frightened society frighten powers? No? So the communication strategy was changed and it worked upon 
emotions, empowerment, let's come together, let's find each other, let's see we are many, let's see we are not alone. And once we do this, we feel much stronger and then we can fight the powers, no? Uh, how do we use humor? Humor is a fantastic way of getting over to people and it also helps break fear and we've also seen like internet itself produces all these memes. Have you heard about memes and memetics? Everyone is... Uh, okay, so we have to know how to use memes and memetics in order to, even though we have more elaborate ideas and, and, and information to put through, how can we uh, extract this and make it like travel through a meme where people get interested in this, where that captures people's attention so they, then they can go deeper and uh, come along with us in a more like political discourse, no? For example, here feminization no, of the language and the narratives we, we use is, 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 is very important. I think you must have already heard it as well yesterday no, in a lot of what the speakers were, were talking about. No? Um, and what is the objective of all of this? No? Why are we using social media in this way? Why are we uh, thinking about uh, the different audiences we're wanting to, to reach? Why are we um, trying to uh, break the algorithms of Twitter, for example? No? We want to spill out into the mainstream. We want to reach people we would normally not reach with a message that would like, ch try and help to change the cultural hegemony. No? Um, we have seen, so this is what the 15M did in Spain, no? it came through with a really strong message, with a very, very good capacity to communicate, uh, using a mix of all these elements, and it produced a transformation of society, which is still in, still in motion, which then opened up space and windows so new political proposals could, could come through. No? So it is very, communication is a key, key element to help transform our societies so then we can build uh, new things um, in its place. No? And then this is like the cuña, I don't know in English, it's wedge or, well, wedge, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, like lots of like traditional like activist groups, yes, anti-capitalism, yeah, rah, rah, rah. like people don't, can't accept this, no? So we have to try and uh, through memes, through other ways, try to push in different, whatever idea we want to get to, no? But not confront them up first with a very strong and radical idea, no? How can we get closer to them at a rhythm that is more acceptable for people, no? So. When we build the narratives, we also think of going s smoothly into more complex ideas, no? So I will just... Well, I wanted to show you this image, this image because I think it um, explains really good what Emma was talking about and the issue of um, targeting and universal messages that we were talking before. Um, today, there's a, an important demonstration here in Barcelona against gentrification and for the right of the house to the housing, etc. And some collectives launched this, well, this, this banner, this um, cartel, well, this poster for um, calling to the demonstration. No? And it says, um, <laughs> bye bye Barcelona, um, being rich, um, well, como, bueno, bye bye Barcelona. <laughs> um, como de, de being rich, cost me what is yours. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm not saying that it's bad, but as you can imagine, um, these um, people who could feel identified with that, um, I think it's people who could um, usually, usually go to the demonstration. So it's, um, well, it's good, it's good because to these people who would usually go to the demonstration, you reinforce the message, no? And you make them more anti-capitalist, whatever. But to 
many, many thousands of people, which is a huge majority of people in the city that have housing problems, that have been evicted, that cannot pay the mortgage or the rent, etc., they would not probably feel identified with this kind of imaginary. No, I'm not saying that you you have to go to to the other to the other extreme to the other and and produce a kind of imaginary which is so generic and um, like for everyone that that it's not it's not pushy it doesn't has political strength but i think it's important puedes ponerlo otra vez un segundo i think it's important always to find a, um, to find a balance between um, an imaginary and messages and memes that all, that produce uh, that are pushy that produce a concrete that are pushing for concrete um, issues for concrete demands claims etc. Um, but also an imaginary that that can um, reach um, many people that can and um, wider your community etc. But see lapa igual. This is. I don't know if you know the plat well, Plataforma Afectados por la Hipoteca. It's a really important social movement here in Spain against eviction. And um, it's people who have problems with their mortgage. They are organized. And they also, it's people also that have problems with housing, but it's a really different imaginary. No? And a really um, different memetics and a really different kind of, of language and images, etc. Um, so, as you see, it's not, of course, it's not vacío, como se dice? estoy fatal. It's not an empty message. It's not um, a generalistic, universal message that doesn't say anything. But it's a message that it's, um, it's pushy, it's, it's, it's strong, it claims for the right to the housing, against evictions, etc. But it, it doesn't talk only to an anti-capitalist, an activist, and people who are already politicized. But it talks to, to a, let's say, to a wider community. Um, and I think this is really important related to what Emma was talking about, the Cunha the wage. wage strategy. And the idea we were talking before of not producing universal messages, um, but also try to be aware of not producing messages only for activists or only for people who are already politicized or only for people who already would go to the demonstration this afternoon. No? How can you reach um, people from poor neighborhoods who wouldn't, who are not following you even maybe on social media, who only follow information through the main, main so the big mass media? How can you, it's a really important question to ask ourselves, how can we reach um, people who are not usually um, politicized and engaged with, with, with activism? like the meme, the, the, the big phrase no, of, of La Paz and it has gone through to other movements. And the word yes, no, it, it's possible. Uh, it contrasts with how more traditional movements always say no, no, stop this, against this, no, no, no. Like just the word no and yes has a completely different energy to it, no? So I think...
you just send a message across. Mm. You know, you get more enemies. Even people who are supposed to support you, they because of your campaign, you don't should be your enemy. Um, that's why at one point I was thinking about where you said, uh, where you said, uh, is it enemies? I was going to say also threats. It's because some of them, they could essentially not be your enemies, but they can be, they can yeah. be threats. So I was thinking they can be, you know, uh, enemy spies, threats. Because the enemy already, you know the enemy, and you know the position of the enemy. <coughs> but somebody even within can be your threat in terms of. I will show you an example which is very interesting and it also, what does, it's the issue of how can we economize our narrative and our efforts, no? Like, uh, lots of people know about uh, Lord of the Rings, no? And Mordor, no? So how can we, uh, for a demonstration, easily identify for the people why we're there and what we're going for? So this is a bank which is uh, one of the worst banks we have of many. Uh, and it's two black towers that are there, like in the city. Blah, blah, blah. So they took the, the, the eye of, um, and put it there, and tum that's it. Kaisha is Mordor. Easy as that. <laughs> Everyone understands it. It's really mainstream, and it really worked very well. No? And there was a video where that mixed stuff. Like, we are, you, we, you also look into the mainstream culture and see what you can grab from there in order to people know exactly why they are going out on this demonstration. It's the banks that are taking the money, no? And this is like very, it was very clear for us for the 15M. It's bankers and politicians that are treating us as merchandise, no? Like, uh, and, it, and, and these simple things really work much better than a whole long manifesto because of this, 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 and this, no? Exactly. I, I, I would give you a example for example. By the way, my name is Nami. We just won the election in December 2016. Uh, when, when, the, when the input level was defeated, you know, and you need to you know, give up power. So what we did was uh, we developed a message, Gandhi has decided. And you know, Gandhi has decided, and we pushed that message all over. So what happened was that the military was used against us to go, you know, bring down those messages. So, you know, we set up teams. As they drop those messages down, they bring them down. We got that um, you know, photo and then use that again. And that, that goes to spread further that our message is powerful, that the military will go after that message, really bringing it up. And it was a trending war for, across the world, and it really is not a true. Okay, so we just have like half an hour. Uh, we thought we would be faster than we have been. Um, but do you guys feel motivated if we split in two and have a dynamic, yeah? We can make it? We have two proposals. No, 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 que no sé si... Si merece. The proposal, let's all decide, sí, okay? Sí. We had a proposal of breaking up in two groups and we would, uh, and we were saying one group uh, would talk about communication, building narratives and da, 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 regarding social movements with the example of a housing movement in a city, okay? And the other example was uh, another group would gather to talk about how to build a communication device, narrative, da, 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 for a municipal candidacy well, 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 or an institution. Uh-huh, okay. So would this suit for you? Do you think this proposal is okay? Can I see hands? Yeah, okay. Who would, who, who would, uh, who would like to do like the social movement part as well? How many of us? Okay, so the rest I imagine you're interested in the institution, building an institutional, yeah? Yeah, so let's try and do this quick. Yeah, or do you have another proposal? No, I was going to say to do it all together. Yeah, maybe. Do you want to consider it? He thinks that it's better
So Instagram now it's um, reemplazar. Yeah. Well, it's um, um, Instagram is taking man, many functionalities that has in uh, Snapchat. So it's um, commu Snapchat communities are going to Instagram. But I also, I mean, I think this is really different in many countries, in, in the different countries and also in the different continents. So I recommend you to really have a look at um, the social media communities on your country and also, and also in your city because it really changes from one side to another. Um, there's there's, a, there's a, um, a group which is called We Are Social and they make an, an, an annual um, report of social media in all the countries of the world and worldwide also and, and the use of um, and 4G and data and mobile internet penetration, everything. So if you have a look of these in, um, reports of We Are Social, I think you get many of information. It's important key. We Are Social. Sí, sí. Okay. So we, we have um, two case studies. One is uh, a housing movement that works for the right to the housing against evictions, wants to, well, wants to, to push for the municipality to, let, to, 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 to stop evictions. They, they want to change the law um, at the national level, but also municipal level, etc. No? I think this is a really common issue globally in all the cities. And in the other case, we, we could have um, an, inst an institution which is not um, public administration, what, but it works more a kind of a lobby or think tank and wants to push for, for, for social housing policies, etc. No?
Okay, so we were talking yeah. about different. We were talking about uh, imagine like we have to put our, our head in, in both examples. Okay, we are going to try and identify items of how we would b build a communication campaign for a housing movement and then contrast it on how would we do it differently if we were some kind of organization, institution, political part, uh, platform, whatever, no? So, uh, what we first talked about um, was uh, social media, for example. What kind of tools would we open or would we use for each, uh, for each uh, identity, so to say, no? What, what would you use, use for example, in your, in your case, in your collective or institution? Hmm. Like, how many of you are more on this side? Can I see sounds? And how many of you are more on this side? Yeah, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, from an institution, you were talking about using uh, also uh, Snapchat and Instagram, no? So, so maybe we can use a mix of tools for, for all of them, no? <coughs> okay. Um, about building our identity. No, how would we build our identity? Yeah, all these things are important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, to produce um, an imaginary that people can identify with you. No? Sí. Pero ten, ten la pantalla. Um, well, I think the, f the first step would be like identify your community, as we were saying, no? Um, the people you want to reach, um, the people who are already interested in this issue, for example, in the issue of housing, no? Um, you might have a, a kind of s sociological analysis of what's going on on your city, no? In terms of evictions, um, the price of the rents, etc. Um, now here in Barcelona, for example, there's a, a, a rent, um, rent tenants union um, emerging in Barcelona, and they had a, they they started with an with the collective and um, with a really interesting analysis about the price of the rents and the the touristification of the city, etc. So having an analysis of your community and from that defining the tools um, you want to use and the way you want to to use it. I don't know if you want to put some idea, people who are more identified with this site or... Like, so what would be the different communities we would be talking to here? So we were based in the city and the way that our city is built is a lot of the people that live in the city don't live in the city. So the issue of peripheries, you mean, no? Okay. And nowadays, like, do we have a, like, different class, no? Like, here we are having, like, For example, what we are having here, like in the European periphery, is that the middle class is disappearing. So you have the challenge of speaking to people that used to be middle class, that have 
a cultural background, they have a, a specific education, but you're also talking to working class and you're also talking like it's a huge, to, to immigrants that have come to the country, you know, and it's a very, very big challenge, no? how to uh, really identify who is this whole big community that can come together under, under one movement, no? and, and, and how to create an identity that will hold all. No? But for example, you are talking about followers, no? Um, I think, uh, like, if you're talking about followers, you are already in that old logic, sorry to say, no? <laughs> like, I am leading and they are following, no? But the objective is that they feel part and, particip and, part and participating and belong to this identity, that they also have something to give. They are useful. For, for an issue. So yes, great that you do have something to give them that is really useful, but we have to create the space also that, so they can give back and they can participate back, no? But the, just to follow you, this was already a response for the meeting that we had with them. Ah, yeah. That, that this is one of the major problems that they had. That, that ah, yeah. And you participated in that. Yeah. And so also this was another response after the meeting that they had with the room, you know, you know when they got back. So yeah. Yeah. This was mm -hmm. the response. It's useful. Uh huh. Ah, okay, yeah, perfect. And what about this I, side? I don't say we should neglect the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, but they have a special, they may have a special. Mm -hmm.
yeah, okay. side, people who of you, the ones of you who participate in a kind of institution, think tank, etc. How how do you address the the issue of communications in terms of reaching your community, the tools you use? Um, how would you do it, for example, if there was uh, a campaign for changing the housing law, etc.?
discovered it uh, in, in other group, you know, that it's uh, that in Warsaw we had a problem that many restaurants were not allowing people to go in with dogs. So we did an action, actually we go from restaurant to restaurant asking people to let the dogs in, you know. We were saying what's the problem with it, but many people actually agreed from it, you know. So we we were we are going with lots of stuff, you know, concerning transparency and so on, but from time to time we just share a picture of the dog in front of the restaurant, uh, having a bowl of water saying, look what we did, this restaurant is open right now, you know. And it's, it helps actually to, to divert the message to different groups because uh, sometimes people are tired of this powerful message. So it's good also sometimes to go from soft to hard, you know, and find the, the different angles of it. Yeah, but so like, uh, even like what they what we did, you know, like, are we always conveying very strong political messages or can we relax some days, you know, like, can we also share some doctrinal elements so that we have this identification with either your institution or are you always like sharing information, information, research, blah, blah, blah. are you sharing other elements that might make
pictures of people and people getting together and working together. That's what, and then you can also have everyone in there and make those up to their network, trying to increase that 90% that are engaging because they actually know someone that's part of it. So that's something we're trying to do too, is get out of, show that we're not just in the space, but we're out of the world. We're in the community. And it's a big debate about that.
Thank you. 